Well, the last uh, lecturer is uh, Jose Manuel Garcia Aznar, and uh, Jose Manuel is from the University of uh, Zaragoza. Uh, he, is, uh, he took his PhD in uh, 1999, and in fact, uh, he was one of the first uh, researchers uh, here in Spain to uh, do his PhD on the, uh, on the area of biomechanics, which is now a very active area, as you may see, in the computational mechanics uh, community. He is a full professor at the University of Zaragoza, where he is uh, one of the heads of a unit for doing research in biomechanics, but also mechanobiology, which will be the area of his talk here. And uh, also, I am very proud because I, I am the vice president of uh, SEMNI, who is the organizer of this Congress. So I'm also very proud that he uh, obtained the uh, Juan Simo Award uh, by SEMNI as a joint investigator in 2004. So I hope uh, the technical questions about the projection can be sorted out. Oh, okay, that looks better now. Okay, Manu, you can start. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to do, to do this presentation. So, uh, I would like to remark that cell migration is a relevant phenomena that regulate most of the mechanisms in tissue regeneration or tissue morphogenesis and cancer invas invasion. We can rely, for example, when we have a small wound our body is able to repair this wound because, to heal this wound, because the cells are able to get the injured, the injured area. However, when we have a large wound, our cells are not able to get the injured area. So, if we know how migration is work, we can help to regenerate tissues. But in addition, for example, however, in, in cancer, the problem is the cell has a high capacity of cell migration. So our idea is to know better how the cell move in order to stop their movement. So it's clear that cell migration is a relevant phenomena also for tissue regeneration and for cancer. But we have to keep in mind that our body is is a very complex system with a clear hierarchical organization. That when we try to understand how the cells are moving, we need to know how is the microenvironment that the cells are sensing. In this presentation, I'm mainly going to focus in these three scales. What's happening when I observe cell migration at tissue level, cell level, or I would like to understand crucial phenomena at the cellular level. So, in this overview, I'm going to show the different models that I'm going to briefly describe to show the result and the different numerical approaches that we are using and also the different multiphysic problems that we are solving. Initially, I'm going to start with a classical approach or for modeling cell migration using conventional reaction diffusion equation. Normally, we take into account, like, for example, in the previous presentation, the extracellular matrix, where we can consider the different components of this matrix, and normally we define a constitutive law, and later we use or define the conservation equations. In addition, we have to take into account the soluble factors that are moving with the interstitial fluid flow, uh, 
that are going to regulate many processes that normally is called growth factor. And finally, we also have to take into account the cells. The cells are the active components. So the cells can migrate, can proliferate, can differentiate, and can die. And there are the source of new tissue. They can create new tissue. They can remove tissue. They can release new growth factors, or they can exert forces during this process. Of course, we have also to consider the conservation equation. Please let me show you a simple example that we developed using this kind of approach that was to simulate a gun healing process in which we consider the equilibrium of the oxygen, later the equilibrium of the macrophyte, uh, the revived growth factor, capillarity, and fibroblast. And we also, this is the reaction term that are clearly nonlinear components. In addition, we take into account the mechanical equilibrium. We have to take into account the behavior of the extracellular matrix that for the case of the skin is normally used an ordinary approach. And later we have to take into account the cellular, the forces, the stresses that the cell are doing on the matrix. So we are going to consider that these forces are depending on the concentration and also a process that is called mechanosensing that I'm going to describe later. And with this approach, we are able to simulate how fibroblasts are able to fill out all the injury area, regenerating the tissue and contracting. All of you, when you have a small wound, you can observe that you have contraction in your wound. So it is due to the fibroblasts that are doing forces to help this regeneration. So you can see here, with this approach, we are able to see how the fibroblasts migrate into, uh, inside the wound. But how do cells move? For that, we are going to try to understand going down into the scale and into the cell. Um, please, let me, a small comparison, a small an analogy to try to understand how cells move. And I'm going to compare the movement of cells with our body. Normally, when we are moving, we can move because we have our skeleton. Our skeleton is able to support traction and compression forces and exert forces. The cell also has a, a skeleton. It's called cytoskeleton. The main advantage of the cytoskeleton is dynamics. Dynamics is, can change depending on the need of the environment that surround the cell. And this is very important. Additionally, we have a filamentous that you can see in this picture, a filamentous and heterogeneous network that is three-dimensional. And we have three main components. The actin, that is the blue side, the microtubule, that is the green filament, and the intermediate filament that are the red ones. These elements are supporting the forces that the cell are doing during the movement. But in addition, the cell can exert forces. It has molecular motors. The most known is the myosin. The myosin is light along the actin filament. So the myosin are the muscles of the cell. It's the same component that we are using in our muscle. So the cell is able to exert forces contracting, for example, the matrix. But for doing movement, we need, when we walk, we need a substrate, and we need a floor. And the cell for moving in 2D need a substrate. And when the cell is moving on 2D, it's exerting forces on the substrate. So you can see that it's much easier for us to walk, for example, in a stiff floor than if we try to walk in a soft floor or, for example, in a trampoline. That is much more difficult. So for the cell, it's very similar. So they are going to be to have movement, a better movement at high uh, stiffness. But what happens is normally the 2D migration is not the most physiological way or the most physiological environment of the cell. The cells normally are in 3D. Like, for example, children try to climb in a 3D grid of ropes. 
If we try to do this, we are moving in 3D, and we have to do exert forces and on the matrix. So if you can see here one cell in 3D, it's very similar to this process. So we have to take into account that the cell is normally is in three dimension. In all these cases, both in 2D and in 3D, the cell normally follow the following cycle. Initially, it polarized. It polarized, defining clear structure, the additions in the front, additions in the back, the acting filaments around in the cell, and clearly the Giza direction. The polarization is clearly defined by the environment that surrounds the cell. After that, the cell in the front start to exert protrusion. The acting filament start to extend, to polarize, to polymerize, sorry, and they start to create new filaments. And in, a, in, in addition, it creates new addition there. After that, the cell contract. Contract, and in addition, we can found a rear retraction in the back part of the cell. This pointer. Yes, much better. So in this part, the cell contract. And this cycle repeat continuously. So the cell is polarizing, is producing addition formation, migrating, polarize again, is repeating continuously. You can see here in this cell cultures how cell moving in 2D are in 3D. So which factors regulate, drive this cell migration? There is a combination of factors that are influencing. Of course, is the geometry is not the same, for example, how the cell moves in a planar substrate or in a curved substrate, but also is influenced by the chemistry. We have a factor, a chemical factor, is also very important. But in this lecture, I'm going to focus mainly on mechanics. So taking into account this limitation, I'm going down into the scale, I'm going to try to, to simulate different aspects of mechanics. For that, First, I'm going to review some interesting experiments. The first experiment that is called durotasis was developed by Law, and he cultures cells in one substrate that have a soft side and a stiff side. And he can show, see, sorry, that the cells that are located in the soft side normally tend to cross to the stiff side. However, the cells that are located in the stiff side never cross to the soft side. This phenomena is called um, durotaxis. However, they can change the tendency if they apply forces with a micro-needle, needle, certain forces close to the cell, they can actually to move the cell to the soft side. This phenomena is called tensotaxis. This is a more recent paper that in which the cell was cultured in 2D with micro pillars, and they were able to quantify the forces that the cell are doing. And it's very interesting to observe a saturation phenomena. So when the stiffness of the micro pillars is very low, the force follow a linear tendency with the stiffness. However, there is a value of the stiffness in which the cell is not able to modify the forces. So in this area of the stiffness, the cell is not able to sense the stiffness because the response is identical. There is a saturation of these forces. A final experiment is what uh, authors call plethotasis. The cells normally tend to move following the local orientation of the maximal principal stress. Taking into account all these phenomena, we try to simulate cell migration, but simplifying these processes. In fact, we consider three phenomena. 
First, the cell is contracting to sense the mechanical surroundings. Later, the cell is going to, depending on this contraction, is going to polarize. And defend, one defining this polarization, the cell is going to move. So we consider that we have a domain for the cell, a domain for the substrate, and we consider the equilibrium on each part, and we consider a simple system for the cell body that is a, a set of springs and, a, and an actuator. And we consider that the stresses that are exerted in the cell has an isotropic part that now I'm going to explain, and later I have an anisotropic term defining in function of the polarization direction. So this system of springs is very simple, but it try to follow the local structure of the cell. We, I have explained the cell has a part that are the microtubules. So for simulating the microtubules, we consider that this is the passive part of the cell. We incorporate this spring. And we put in parallel the atomiosin system. The atomiosin system consists of the actin, and we simulate this with a spring, a later an actuator that correspond the forces that the molecular motors are doing there. For simulating the myosin, we follow the typical his law that is used in muscles. So we consider that there is an optimum slide in which the myosin is able to serve the maximum forces. And when we go far from this position, this forces is decreasing. So the total stresses is given in function of the cell strain. But it's very easy to understand this, this formula because it's only the first branch of this parallel system where we have the passive component that is linear. And later we have the active forces that are doing by the atomiosin system. And the total force is the addition of the two contribution. Later, we also take into account the polarization. For that, we are going to assume that the cells tend to polarize following the direction of maximal principal stress. And to migrate, to define the migration, we use a very simple approach. We use an equilibrium of forces when we have three terms. The first term is completely random. It's the production that is completely random. The second term is the drag force that has a viscous friction depending on the stiffness, and we have the velocity of the cell. And finally, we have the traction force that the cells are doing to move. And these forces is depending on the concentration density of receptor and ligand, following the approach proposed by Thaman. But we incorporate two terms. We incorporate that the force that the cells are doing that is not constant. It's depending on the surrounding, on the mechanical environment that surrounds the cell. And we also take into account the polarization direction. So in this way, we are able to solve this equation, and we obtain the velocity of the cell. So the algorithm is very simple. We use, we make a mechanical analysis solving the mechanosensing problem. With this, we obtain the polarization direction, we have remodel the cytoskeleton, and the cell finally migrate, update the velocity, and with this, we are able to simulate migration. So the idea was to simulate the experiments of law, simulating the cells in the soft and the stiff side. And for example, we can see here that the red cell is in the stiff side, and normally it tends to move toward the boundary condition, never to the soft side. However, the blue cell always tries to cross to the stiff side. But in addition, we have compared the velocity and the traction force. If you see the traction force that the cells are doing in function of the stiffness, 
achieve a saturation level when the stiffness is increased, as we have observed in the experiments of the micropillar that has been quantified in the in vitro experiments. But in addition, the velocity of the cell follows this curve. At low stiffness, the velocity is, the speed is very low. When we increase the stiffness, the velocity increases, and when the stiffness is increased, later the speed goes down again. It is in concordance with the experiment of Peyton and Putnam. But we also try to understand if the model is able to simulate tensotaxis. So for that, we try to see if the cell is able, if we are able to move the cell in the direction, in the contrary direction. So you see that when we increase applying a local force close to the cell, if we increase the force, the immigration direction, when at a level of force, change completely, going in the contrary direction, according to the experiments of flow. So with this simple model, we have been able to understand cell migration. So now we try to, to improve our approach, simulating more complex phenomena, like, for example, the experiments of microfluidics in which we have chemotaxis and fluid flow. We have a gel and we applied a pressure gradient. It is based in the world of Polacek, a pressure gradient, and it is evaluated the velocities, and it is confirmed that our model is in accordance with the velocities measured in the experiments. And for that, we use a probabilistic approach. We define a model in which the cell is discretized as a set of voxels. And then we consider that there is a probability for add new part of the cell or remove part of the cell. And this model is completely phenomenological, and we take into account the cell stresses, the chemical, the growth factor concentration, and the fluid flow. So the approach is very simple. If we have a fixed mess, and in part of this mess, we have the set of the boss. We have here a section. This is the cell contour. And imagine that this is the nucleus. And for example, this element is the one that has the maximum cell stress. And we are just, we go to all the elements, and we see that this element has going to be more probability to add one element in this position than this position because it's closer to this direction. So in this way, we are adding elements or removing elements. And in this way, in this phenomenological way, we are able to quantify in a probabilistic way the effect of these different factors. So the numerical implementation, we have first do an, a chemical analysis, the fluid flow analysis, mechanical conditions. So in this, we establish the probability functions and we add or remove elements and update the cell shape. So in this case, we have a chemical factor here, and we are able how the cells to move in this direction. Sorry, in this, in this model, the, the chemical factor is here. And we can see that the model is able to predict qualitatively the tendency of migration of the cells. So this is a substrate, a, a, a extracellular matrix that is a porous material. In this case, we apply the fluid flow, and we can see that the cell is able to move through the pores following the direction of the fluid flow. But we see some limitation of these both approaches. So we see that the fluid flow has a very relevant, as we have seen in the, in the previous talk, a very relevant aspect on the cell. But both approaches that we have considered are not enough accurate. So we try to improve th this approach. And we need to represent better the shape of the cell above. And in addition, we need to understand better the cell and fluid interaction. For that, we have improved and we try to develop an immersed finite element approach. In this system, we simulate in one 
inside the solid, the solid for the cell, and in this case, we consider a new Hookian uh, constitutive law. We consider on the other side the fluid, assuming a, a Hookian uh, behavior, and later we have the interface. The interface when we assume that the same velocity, the velocity of the solid coincide with the velocity of the fluid, and we have the normal stresses coincident in the interface. So the idea is to solve uh, in a coupling way the three aspects, the equilibrium in the solid, fluid, and the interface. And for that, we need the discretization. This is, we are going to use a fish mix for the fluid, and we have an interface, a moving interface that corresponds to the domain of the, of the cell. And we have to discretize the domain of the fluid and the domain of the solid. For that, we use a level set approach defining the distance functions to the corresponding interface. So the algorithm is we define the uh, immersion of the, of the geometry. We solve the solid fluid equilibrium, determine the new displacement, and we update the geometry. We have to take into account that when we update the geometry, we have the new positions of the solid here, but we have to go back to obtain the internal variables and to update these variables in the new configuration. With that, we finish and we, are, we close the loop and we are able to simulate the cell movement. As a first example, we have simulated the movement of one cell that is in a free space and has to move in a confined uh, space. That is typically can occur in some uh, circumstances. So we can see how the cell is deforming, updating its shape in function of the geometry. Modifying the parameters, we are able to understand the influence of the different uh, properties of the cell, and we are also able to understand the influence of the different geometries of the, of the, of the confinement. This is a first approach, and later we have simulated a cell with the nucleus. So we consider a fluid-fluid interface and a solid and fluid interface, and we can see here the velocity profile, and we apply a force, a forces in the nucleus, and we can see the deformation of the uh, cell inside the confined space. So it is interesting. I have shown different models to understand how the cell move globally, but now we are interested to understand fundamental mechanisms inside the cells. For that, we are going to go down into the scale to understand how is the addition. Addition is one of the most relevant phenomena in cell migration. We can see that I said that protrusion is one of the most relevant phenomena that regulate protrusion, that regulate migration. You can see here, this is real, uh, animation of how the cell exert this protrusion. And one of the aspects that is crucial or is thought to be crucial for mechanosensing is the dynamics of philopodia. Philopodia are the system that you can see here that go advance and later go back. This go back phenomena is thought or it is hypothesized that is regulating mechanosensing. So during this protrusion is also for addition. But addition is a very complex process because we have more than 150 molecules involved in this process. So to understand this is, is very difficult. And in addition, it's clear, but when addition is, is, is for, we have a clear union between the substrate and the actin system. And we are going to try to simulate this phenomena of philopodia. 
there was a first work, experimental and theoretical model, that tried to simulate the phenomena of the retrograde flow of the actin. The actin normally advanced, as I have shown, and later they give a retrograde flow. So they were able to measure the velocity of this retrograde flow in function of the stiffness. And you can see here that a low stiffness, the velocity is higher. When we increase the substrate stiffness, the velocity of the actin is going down. And later, when the stiffness is increased, the velocity increases quickly. In this model, they use a very simple model only with the springs, and they are able to more or less simulate this tendency. We try to improve the meaning of what's happening inside of this process. For that, we simulate the actin, the philopodia dynamics, considering only one single actin. We initially neglect the uh, membrane and consider only the integrin like a point in the extracellular matrix, in the substrate. We use a particle-based approach using Langevin equation, and we neglect inertial terms. And we consider two forces, the Brownian dynamics forces, and later interaction forces that I'm going to describe in the next slide. So there are, this model has three parts. The first part is the atomiosin complex. The myosin is a certain force to go back the actin filament. And we are going to consider, because the actin filament is much uh, st stiffer than the additions, as a rigid solid. Later, we are going to consider the addition complex that can be linked, can be bin binding to the actin or to the substrate. And finally, the substrate with the different ligands where the integrins are joined. If I focus in the, in the addition complex, we can consider that the addition can be to the actin or to the integrin. So there are three possible conditions. The uh, addition is free, so it has Brownian dynamics movement. The addition is bound to one side or is bounded to, bound to the two sides. It's, it is free, so only Brownian dynamics movement is, is guided, guide the process. If it is bound to one side, we consider that there is a position of equilibrium that is forming a perpendicular direction to the actin filament or to the substrate. And however, when the addition is joined to the actin and the, to the substrate, we use this expression that try to consider the possible effect of unfolding. Normally, when we have large molecular, we can observe unfolding. So this expression is this, is this graph. And if we don't have a folding, initially we have this curve. When a folding occurs like a probability phenomena, regulating by this expression, this, this expression changes, and we have the first unfolding. So later, we follow this curve. So in this way, we are considering the possibility of different unfolding phenomena in the molecular. But in addition, the myosin, the system, can bind, in, can bind to the actin or not, and can unbound. And if this unbinding right is, sorry, is depending is depending on this expression on the force that is transmitting. So we can see here the a typical simulation, and later what we saw is the effect of the substrate properties. So we can see that at high velocity, at low uh, elastic modulus, we have high velocities because mainly it is regulated by the deformation of the, extra, of the substrate. When we have a highest elastic modulus, we can see what's happening is, is unbinding. There is an unbinding, but not all of them. However, when we have a large 
a bigger uh, phenomenon, uh, just elastic modulus, what's happening is the is completely unbinding. That's why there is an increase of the speed of the actin. Okay, this, and it is a um, parametric analysis that I'm going to advance. But this phenomena is in 2D. Now, it is only our first advance. Of what we are trying to do is in 3D, because in 3D is very relevant how these philopodia are oriented in function of the fibers. Depending on this orientation, it's going to regulate the migration of the cell in 3D. Finally, the last sample is that is very relevant in migration is contraction. This is a very interesting experiment in which one cell was set in between two plates. This plate is rigid and this plate is very flexible. And they evaluated how is the forces that the cell are doing. You can see that the cell are doing this temporal evolution of forces, but if we change the rigidity of this plate, the forces is higher. But again, they observe a saturation phenomena. So the initially is linear. However, we can observe that there is a saturation phenomenon. So we develop a model that try to predict this behavior. But as a consequence of a microstructural elements using a particle based approach and we are going to try to observe the emerging behavior of this uh, microstructural behavior. So for that, we simulate the cytoskeleton, considering the actin filaments, the actin filaments in blue, the cross linkers in between the different actin filaments in green, and molecular myosin motors in red. So for that, we use a Brownian dynamics approach, and we start the simulation with an initial network. So we take into account, again, the Langevin equation. We neglect the inertial effect. We take into account extension and bending phenomena and repulsion between the different filaments. We also take into account unbinding phenomena between the actin filament and this is the expression, okay, it's very long equation, but it's very simple to understand. This is the, the, the regulation of the walking, of the speed of the motors on the actin. So if we have a molecular motor here, if the force that the motor is doing is oriented in the direction of the pointed, the velocity, the velocity is very small because normally the motors tend to move toward the bar end. So you can see here that when the force is oriented to the pointy, the velocity is very small. However, when the force is oriented toward the bar end, the velocity is much higher. So with that, we consider a part of the cytoskeleton and we fill out all the surroundings with a a substrate with a now mechanical properties. And we can observe here the evolution of the contraction in both approaches, in both cases, a low and high stiffness. And we can observe the different network morphology. When the stiffness is very low, we can see that the network is very joined because we don't have a space. And the force that is asserting is lower. However, when we have a high stiffness, we can see gap spaces, free spaces here. The actin is more aligned, asserting higher forces. So it's very interesting that if we observe the emerging behavior, we can see that we observe the temporal effect, the time-dependent phenomena, but we can see that if the stiffness is low, the system, the resultant forces that the network is doing is very low. However, when we increase the stiffness, we increase the force level. And if we increase more, we can see that there is a saturation. Independently of these values, the cell is not able to exert more forces. 
it is very interesting to realize that the four, the cells normally are working in this low soft material because the cell is not able to sense these stiff materials. So I advance this because, so it's, I, I have tried to show in, in my presentation different kind of numerical models to understand one, pheno one crucial uh, phenomenon like is cell migration combining at different scale levels and solving different multiphysic problems. I would like to finish with some quick conclusions. So, in any case, this, all these numerical simulations require validation. Without validation, it's, 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 it's impossible to, in some way, to confirm the use, the use of these techniques. So, currently, we are trying to combine our models with experiments, in vitro experiments, and image processing techniques, where we do experiments of cell migration, and we quantify, because all our models are quality, but here we're trying to quantify cell migration in order to quantify and to describe better these processes. In addition, I think it's very important to move from mechanobiology to mechanochemobiology. And it's also it's a promising tool, but we need novel numerical strategies that allow to link scales and reduce the computational cost. So I would like to thank the institution that give us the money and all the person of, of the group and other collaborators in U USA, Germany, and Spain. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose Manuel, for this very uh, interesting lecture in which uh, you are showing us the new fields in which computational mechanics can be applied. I thought that uh, when uh, you people are shifting to mechanobiology, it was already complex enough, but uh, now you say that we have to change to me uh, a mechanochemical, uh, biochemical. <laughs> so, uh, it is uh, becoming more and more complex. So we have time for one or two questions before the break. Is anybody in the audience uh, interested in posing a question? There are no questions. I see you are all eager to go for the coffee break. I will, I will just venture one, one question myself. Um, you have talked uh, a lot about the very uh, complex uh, um, simulation models uh, at, at the different levels that you have uh, um, shown here. And uh, I, I would like to ask you that uh, once you have all these different phases and the equations that you have to couple together, which sometimes are very complex, um, what is the situation regarding the reliability and the robustness of the algorithms? Are there any specific uh, problems or questions that you have encountered? Or uh, do you find that the uh, numerical algorithms that you employ are generally well behaved uh, with uh, smooth, uh, um, smooth predictions and so on? Or do you have spe special problems in your, in your simulations? Normally, what we try is um, to understand the, what's happening in the experiment, in the biology, and with that, later we try to define uh, one model that could help us to understand what is happening inside. So, it's interesting first to understand what, for example, in cell migration, we try to understand in the philopodia how the philopodia it behaves. So after that, we try to simplify this and to find the most simple model that help us to understand the phenomena. So the key point is one that we do this, the idea is to try to understand key point phenomena locally and to go up in the scale. 
to achieve a biggest description of the cell and to have a description of the cell what's happening in the global behavior when the cell is inside one matrix in 3D. But in my opinion, is we should to understand fundamental mechanisms in biology and later go up in the scale to try to understand later more complex phenomena. I don't know if I answered your question, but I have tried it. <laughs> okay, more or less. <laughs> well, if there are no more questions, so let's uh, thank the speaker again. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, before we finish or close this session, I would like to thank uh, once more the three semi-plenary lecturers, Alberto Figuera, Bernard Schrefler and Jose Garcia Asna. And I want also to thank you for joining this session and for interest in this session. Thank you very much. <laughs>